Hello friends, welcome to the another episode of Decode ECG series. See here we have an ECG which is very very interesting. See, hope assuming that uh, it is taken with normal standardization, uh, let's see the rhythm of the ECG. See there are, uh, for that you have to see lead to. Lead to there are P waves, QRS complexes and T waves. So every p wave is followed by qrs and the rr interval looks fairly regular so rr interval looks regular okay so all the p waves are looking normal similar so it is in normal sinus rhythm then you have to calculate rate rate again you have to see the lead to the how many boxes between rr interval so one big box two big box three big box it's around three so rate is calculated by 300 by three it's around 100 borderline borderline tachycardia so after calculating rhythm and rate you have to calculate axis for that you have to see lead one and lead avf see what happened here in lead one it is predominantly up qrs is predominantly up in lead avf it is predominantly down so both are leaving each other so there is axis is left axis deviation so after that you have to comment on waves see here p waves are normal what happened to qrs look at lead one what happened to qrs see there is a pr interval see the pr interval it's only two and half so it is short PR interval and what happened to QRS? See the initial part of the QRS. There is, see here, it's very prominent here. Here, what happened? There is slurred upstroke like this. Slurred upstroke like this. Okay, so there is short PR interval with slurred upstroke, which is diagnostic of and discordant STT wave changes is diagnostic of WP W syndrome so what are the ecc features of wp wp syndrome one is short pr interval pr interval that is less than 120 milliseconds or less than three small squares then delta waves delta waves are nothing but your slurred upstroke of initial part of the qrs this part slurred upstroke third upstroke of initial part of the QRS next discordant discordant ST T wave changes so these are the three ECC characteristic of WPW syndrome once you diagnose it as WPW syndrome you have to localize the bypass tract where it is whether it is on the right side or left side or whether it is in the free wall or a septal posterior and anterior so for that you have to look at the V1 lead V1 will tell whether it is on the right side or not here in this ECG the lead v1 shows predominantly upward QRS so it is on the left side upside means left side if it would have been down or predominantly negative it would have been on right side so here it is upside so it is on the left side when you diagnose it as left-sided bypass tract you have to know whether it is posterior septal or anterior septal for that you have to look at the lead 2 3 and avf in this what you have to look at is see here there are prominent q waves in lead 2 3 avf there are prominent q waves lead through 2 3 avf prominent q waves so when there are prominent q waves on the lead 2 3 avf it suggests your posterior septal posterior septal so this ecc shows left wpw syndrome with left sided with left posterior septal bypass tract or accessory pathway so hope you got this information hope helpful and uh, let's Catch you up in the next video. Thank you.